Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a digital rebar provision video. Uh, in this case, we're uh, talking about digital rebar version 3.13. Uh, this will also work for 3.14. I'm going to show you how to set up a self-trial demo, in this case using packet.net. Um, you can do this, you can set up a demo in all sorts of environments, virtual machines, cloud. Uh, packet.net's handy because it's actually bare metal. Uh, and their networking is super loose so that I don't have to worry about opening firewall rules and things like that. Um, and so I'll, I'll walk you through that process. This is part of a series of videos. Ultimately, we're going to set up Kubernetes using uh, Crib. Uh, but our first step here is just to set up Digital Rebar. Um, and so we're going to go through that process right now. It's, it's pretty straightforward. I already have a packet account. I'm just going to create uh, a server. In this case, I'm going to call it Demo. I'm going to use uh, Newark where Packet has most of their servers and, and usually the best performance. And I'm just going to use their smallest x86 server with CentOS. Uh, I only need the one. I already have my keys installed so I can log in. And it's going to go ahead and start running a uh, provisioning system or provisioning server. That looks great. And then I'm going to open up a uh, browser window, a command window. There you go. So we'll be able to show you this. A lot of the work I'm going to do here is on the command line. Uh, you can do a lot of things with our UX, and I'm certainly going to show you that too. But uh, we're very proud of the CLI we have. Really, we're CLI first. Actually, we're API first, and then the CLI. Um, and UX is handy to make things easier, of course. Uh, but we're going through the process, waiting for uh, Packet to bring up that server. Uh, in the meantime, I can also bring up the uh, rack and portal. Uh, in this case I'm going to use the latest version, TIP, um, but I could also be using a um, the stable version which is just portal.rackend.io. Uh, and the system's not going to be up yet, but this is would be my loading screen when it does and we'll, we'll look at that in just a second. So in this case we're waiting for the servers. Let's see if they've actually got it up. So I can go to SSH root at uh, server IP And it looks like we're not quite there yet. Uh, one of the things that I'll show you while we're, we're going is if you go to the rebar.digital page, this is our sort of our portal uh, for the community to get documentation, demos, and things like that. If you're watching this demo, it's going to be in, under this uh, space. And I'm, I'm really going to be following the quick start guide here uh, to get this install set up. Uh, so uh, we'll follow these steps right here. Um, I'm going to make some modifications because I want to run the TIP version. Uh, it's often handy if you're playing with some advanced functionality like uh, the latest Kubernetes pieces to use TIP. Um, the APIs are very stable, but there are features that come into TIP, um, and you'll be able to take advantage of those at, you know, at all times. We usually do a release about once every quarter, sometimes a little bit faster, sometimes slower, depending on, on what things are going on. So let's see if the server's ready yet. That looks great. All right, so now I have my server. What I want to do is come over into the documentation. And I want to be in the quick start documentation. So this is the full install with all the features and things like that. And we're going to do the bin bash install, install instructions here, which is going to run the, the rebar install script. Uh, and then it's just going to execute it. Uh, but we don't want to use the default options. So I'm going to cut and paste this, and then we're going to talk a little bit. So what I want to do is I actually want to tell it to use version equals tip, which is going to use the tip version. And I want to use system D. I don't want to run it in the command prompt. I want to be able to run it in the background. So if you just give it system D, it'll set up system D. There's a ton of options. Uh, actually, I'll show you that first. I have a couple of videos that show you this. And we've done some community um, discussions on, on all of these features, which allow you to do things like have completely air-gapped installations, not require any downloads do upgrades, set up HA. It's, it's really crazy how much stuff we've, we've put into the system at this point. Um, but we're going to do the simple, which is install equals tip. If you don't include this, it'll install stable, which is fine. Uh, and actually, even here, uh, I'm going to use the most advanced uh, instructions. Stable is actually very similar to tip. Uh, the installs don't change that much. Uh, and then I'm going to tell it to do systemd, and I need to tell it to install. And so when I do this, it's going to go through 
Um, it doesn't have to be CentOS. It could be uh, any Linux system, uh, but it's going to install the prereqs and get all the pieces and parts, and uh, there's a couple of minimum requirements. Digital Rebar is a Golang uh, executable, and so it really has very minimal requirements to run on any system. It has a very small footprint, and it doesn't have any dependencies. The database uh, and storage systems, APIs, are all integrated in. Uh, the, two, the only other piece that you really need to worry about is the Digital Rebar CLI, uh, DRP CLI, and that is a separate binary executable, um, but that also includes a whole bunch of different things like our inventory system, uh, our net configuration system, and um, the runner itself. So the agent and the CLI are actually all the same pieces. So right now we're just going through the basics in, basic installs, and once that completes, it'll download uh, DRP zip and walk through the process. Let me move that out of the way and I'll show you some of the documentation that we're going to see in here um, which tells you all these these bits and pieces. Uh, once this is this is actually brought up we're going to go to the site so in this case it's trying to ex uh, log into the system. If I just click there what you'll see is it's trying to access the API port in this case. So this is Digital Rebar's API port uh, and it's enabled um, once the system's installed. It's not installed just yet, we're going to get there. Um, and once it is running, we're going to set uh, username and password to Rocket Skates and Rocket Skates. Um, Digital Rebar is a multi user system, it has role based authentication, uh, multi tenancy, a whole bunch of features like that, and, and it's going to take us through the process. Um, I'm going to use the defaults here, but uh, it's very easy to change the password. The UX will actually guide you through that. Um, we encourage people not to leave the default passwords in place. Um, one of the things that's even possible with the way the system's configured is you can um, remove that rocket state. That's one of the install options. So I can set the password right during the install uh, from that script. In this case, we're waiting on network downloads. So uh, apparently, there is some slowdown on the internet tonight. It must be a cat video taking over the internet. So our cat video is finished loading and uh, we have uh, packages coming in. We've installed JQ. If you're not familiar with JQ, it allows you to parse uh, JSON very handily from the command line. We use it quite a bit, very powerful tool. Um, and it's one of the requirements for this script uh, to be able to install Digital Rebar. Uh, so at this point we're actually installing Digital Rebar. You'll notice that the prereqs took a lot longer than actually installing, downloading and installing Digital Rebar, which is uh, very small. Uh, and one of the things, if, you're, if you've seen Digital Rebar videos before, um, what you probably haven't seen is our catalog system in action, um, something that came in in our last version. Super powerful. It allows you to um, run the system with minimal, minimal uh, installation and setup. Uh, so let me go through here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, oops, Let's make sure the daemon daemon gets started. There you go. All right, so we are now running Digital Rebar in the background. Um, there are a couple of things that I probably want to do. Um, so in this case, it looks like it's already installed. Uh, our core task library, which is great. Um, and it's given me some other things I can do. Um, one of them is install our discovery image. So uh, that, I'm going to go ahead and, and start that process right now. It's going to take a couple of seconds. In the, in the meantime, I'm going to click over and uh, go into Digital Rebar. So as soon as uh, I had Digital Rebar install complete, it's actually running. Uh, I have to accept a certificate right now. <laughs> Everything we can secure, we secure in Digital Rebar. And so it's a HTTPS by default. I have to accept that self-signed certificate. You can, of course, generate your own certificate. I'm assuming you're, this is your first time through it. So you're just going to use the certificate that we have. Um, and in this case, what you'll see is I've been running uh, our, our web app here, putting in the address and attaching to the API. This is confusing, and I want to be very clear about how this is working. Uh, we are not attaching to Digital Rebar. RackN is not. Um, you are attaching to the Digital Rebar. You're running this application 
uh, on your browser and it's connecting effectively behind your firewall. There is no connection, firewall penetration, Digital Reorg does not phone home. You can do everything I'm doing. You can run it directly from the endpoint. Uh, I'll do check out a video that we have of how to set that up. Um, it is a perfectly acceptable thing to do to run everything we're showing you without any connections to the internet at all from, from your own endpoint. It's just a little out of scope for this video. So to keep things simpler, we're just gonna do it ourselves. Once again, I showed you the passwords earlier. We have Rocket Skates and Rocket Skates. Once I've authenticated in, this is the UX running against that endpoint that I just set up. Uh, and you can see we have a wizard that's encouraging me to change my default password uh, coming through. If you change the default password, then you have to remember to set it for the CLI. So the CLI uses the default password by default. Um, we don't need subnets and packet. Um, we've got some workflows set up. We'll explain how those things go in other videos. Uh, I do have to set preferences. And if I jump back over to the command line, it's actually giving me some hints about what to do for that. So um, in this case, it told me to upload Sledgehammer, which is the discovery OS. And then I want to set the preferences to use my default workflow. I'll explain that in just a minute. Very easy to do. So I just cut and pasted that command. I could have also done it from the UX. Uh, so let me refresh this page. You'll see these fields over here changed. I could have pulled them down and set them. Um, to make everything work, I want to have a default workflow set. Uh, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do uh, in this case. Let's see. So we're going to come back over here. Uh, and if I want to, th for this for this video, I don't need to install CentOS or Ubuntu, um, but if I do want to do installations for them, I can uh, just come in and I can paste that in and upload. Oops, get that cleared and just upload the ISOs. Um, everything I'm showing you, you of course can also do from the the UX. So uh, you could go in and go into the ISOs command, and you could. Sorry, this is where the ISOs are stored. If I want to know what environments I want, so say I wanted to do the uh, Ubuntu um, install, I could download from here and then upload that into as an ISO. So I'm going to now download the 18.04 ISO, and then I can literally just take that ISO and upload it back into here. And that would allow me to install Ubuntu. Um, Boot M's in, our, in this environment basically control the installation of the system, um, and that's really what drives the process. Well, I'm going to explain that a little bit more um, in the, as we go. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure I've installed a certain amount of content. Uh, content is really what drives the whole system. So it, operating system installs, standard workflows, Kubernetes. Um, we actually have a, a considerable library of, of content. Uh, we, turn it, we turn things off because there's just so much. Um, so you can find sort of the basics by yourself. All of these things come from the Racking Catalog. So if I wanted to take our task library here, which I'm using the release version and want to switch it to the tip version like that, I can literally change it to tip and then install it. It's going to go to our content catalog on the internet and pull things down. Um, you can build your own content packs. We have videos about that, something called Color Demo that shows you how to build your own. Um, and then there's another piece um, where I want to have a community core and I want to actually bring in the tip of that also. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it, it really is that simple to install things. Uh, since I'm in packet, I actually want to use the packet uh, installs also. But I'm, instead of clicking the buttons here, I'm going to show you how to do that using the CLI. So in this case, if I want to install the packet plugin, um, packet as a plugin, I can just say DRP CLI, uh, plugin providers, um, and then I want to upload uh, the packet IPMI, it's an IPMI simulator, uh, from the catalog, packet IPMI, and I want the tip version of this. I could say stable here and it would give me the stable version. Uh, and when I do that, it's going to go inspect our catalog and pull it down um, and install it. And you'll notice over here, uh, do I have the packet pieces in here? Uh, if I refresh, it'll actually show me that I've now installed packet with the version um, and all those things are, are up to date. 
Um, so take take time to install this. Uh, there's some of these are, are Bracken licensed. Uh, it's very simple to generate a self-trial license. You can just create a uh, account with us, create a license, um, and then use anything in this catalog. Uh, we don't restrict access to anything in the catalog if you generate a, a trial license. Okay, so now if I jump back over to here, um, I haven't changed my password. I don't need subnets and packets. All I need to do is create machines. Uh, and to create machines, what I want to do is I want to use packets uh, ability. Uh, I'm just going to call this a node. I want it to be in the same data center. I want to, I just need a tiny for this demo. And then I'm going to use the custom iPixie. And in this case, I have to provide a, a website to boot iPixie from which is exactly what uh, Digital Rebar can provide. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use the uh, provisioning API, which is a different API port. It's, AD, it's uh, not secure because uh, Pixie booting needs a standard web server. So it's HTTP. And then I'm going to go to um, default.ipixy. So this path right here, which is generated by default when I set the default boot environment, discovery. So if I change this value, it changes what these are. Once a machine is known to the system, uh, it doesn't get the default. It actually gets one specific to that machine on a specialized URL. Um, so this is really just for a machine that we've never seen before, which is exactly what we're trying to do with Packet. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to take that path, proven that it works which is just the IP address, 8091 instead of 8092, and default iPixie. And I want to do three of these servers. So we're going to do uh, three servers. We're going to deploy them. And so in this case, uh, Pack is going to start bringing up the nodes. Uh, if I want to get really sneaky, instead of doing discover base, uh, because I installed the plugin, there's a discover packet um, workflow. To take a moment and show you what workflows are uh, because we only have a couple right now for d basic discovery, packet discovery, CentOS, and Ubuntu. Um, in this case, what it does is it actually tells you the process that we're going to take a system through as part of its provisioning operations. This is pretty straightforward. We're discovering the system, we're discovering information about packet because we're in packet, and then we're waiting. Um, but workflows can actually get very, very sophisticated. Um, in this case, for installing CentOS, we're actually doing the install, the netboot install. We're installing the digital rebar runner. Uh, then we're going to make sure that we're finished and wait. Uh, but for, for customers and people who are doing provisioning, we actually have many, many different choices and options that you can have to create a very sophisticated install experience. Things that include doing an inventory, doing burn-in, testing, checking classifying machines, which means actually inspecting their data and then making different decisions or setting values about them. Um, we can even do things like image-based deployment where you're uh, automatically installing an image for something. Uh, so many, many options. We have other videos about that. Um, but I just wanted to show you a little bit about what this is. In this case, we're going through this simple process as the machines are provisioned in packet. And so you'll see the light turned on for refreshing and show the event scroll. Uh, this is actually all the events that the system's generating. But here, those machines have checked in. Uh, they're going through the process, the workflow discover packet, and they uh, fla flashed really quickly through this uh, sledgehammer wait. So they actually went through those stages that I showed you on the screen to complete the process. Um, and at this point, I now actually have a system that's ready to do something like install Kubernetes. Uh, you know, took a couple minutes to download all the prereqs. The actual digital rebar pieces were very, very fast. Um, and the nice thing about what we've done here is we were able to take advantage of the uh, bare metal pieces that we have. Uh, one thing you'll notice is because of the way uh, Packet has been brought up, what uh, because I changed that workflow uh, to do the Packet discovery stage, it actually collected uh, data like the Packet um, SOS information that I need so I can look at the console for the system, the UIDs of that machine, the plan, the facility, um, so I get a whole bunch of information. The other thing you'll see uh, 
that Digital Rebar is really nice for is that we do this deep, deep inventory scan of a whole bunch of information about the system, what we call go high. Um, and so that's a, a very rich amount of, of data. Uh, what I can do very briefly in this video is show you what it would look like if I took the discovery and I created a Rob discover. Uh, and instead of just doing the packet discovery, I could actually add a stage called inventory. And I could make that part of my work. So inventory is going to take that go high data and it's going to convert it into something um, that's simpler to consume. Uh, I'm going to give this one a blue icon and I'll call it I'll just the spy. So in this case, you'll notice these are all locked. They came in from our read-only content. So our catalog content comes in read-only so that you can count on being able to update it. Uh, this one I created so it shows as unlocked and is editable. Um, and if I created new machines, change the Discover workflow, it would automatically do that extra step I just added in. In this case, what I, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to show you how uh, I could just run that instead. So here I'm going into the Rob Discover workflow. All I have to do is change it. The system is automatically going to detect that I changed the workflow and start that process. You'll see here's the inventory check being run. And then it went right through that workflow. Um, and I can flip back and forth if I want. If I change boot environments, the system will actually reboot or change workflows so I can flip between different systems. Uh, so if I wanted to convert one of these things to be a CentOS system, I could literally come in here and go CentOS base and it would start the CentOS process. Um, if I did that, I would want to be a little bit sneaky and go in um, and do a couple of things first. Uh, one of the simplest ones I want to turn kexec on. Uh, so kexec, there we go, turning it on, um, is going to skip rebooting if it switches between operating systems that support our kexec process. So this would let me jump straight into a CentOS install process. Um, I also might want to install my access keys. Um, I don't need to for any of these demos, um, but if I wanted to log into the systems, I would add my access key. So I just add in my SSH key right in here. Uh, pretty straightforward process. Um, I don't need it, so I'm going to remove that. So over here, if I wanted to demonstrate a CentOS install, I would just come over here. I would say CentOS base, and that system is going to be rebooted for me. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like. over here, open up the new tab, SSH to that uh, rescue address, and in this case this will actually, uh, because of one of Packet's features, let me watch the, the system do a netboot right here on the screen. Um, so very simple and straightforward from that perspective. And then if I want to take this system and put it back into Sledgehammer once it's been once it's playing. So right now you'll notice we're waiting for it to boot. We're not going to take any actions until it's completed that. All I have to do is switch it back to Discover. Discover base, Discover packet, or even Rob Discover. And it's going to switch back to Sledgehammer and then go through that process. And you can see it actually tells you what operating system is installed in the system. Um, so while we wait for that to happen, I want to show you over here. Here's the Rob Discover uh, workflow that we ran. And now, instead of just go high, there's actually a list of parameters that were defined on the system that define inventory pulled out of this. And this is a completely user definable list. We give you a nice default set, but you can expand this however you want. Um, and then you can use this for queries and filters and sorts and API calls and things like that. So you can quickly say, give me all the machines with three NICs um, as a parameter query. Um, so all of that is, is very straightforward, but that's all it took to take my deep JSON and convert it into parameters was running a stage. Uh, we have other videos where we teach you how to build stages like that, uh, super powerful thing. Um, but just, just a taste to get you started and try to figure out how things are being built uh, from the system. All right, so with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. It's been, it's been getting a little long, but, you know, nice, quick install of Digital Rebar and, uh, you know, a little bit of a tour. Our next video is going to take this exact environment and install Kubernetes on it. So check back in for that.